uh, I welcome on, once again on behalf of IIF Chennai chapter. And uh, IIF Chennai chapter uh, regularly conducts a webinar on a weekly basis for the important topic which is useful to the foundry men. And as we all know, there are various challenges foundry men faces, and we, we choose each and every week the really important topic and uh, and uh, invite the eminent speakers who are having a more experience in that field and then we get their knowledge to spread in the foundry fraternities. Okay. Today we have Mr. Viswas Kale from VJS Instruments Private Limited. He would talk about temperature measurements. Uh, we would like to have set some ground rules. Kindly put your mobile in silent mode. And we will request you to mute yourself so that it will not disturb the others. And uh, whatever queries comes in your mind, please take a note. And you can raise the queries at the end of the end of your day session to either chat or you can unmute yourself and ask queries. And we have an announcement. I have Chennai chapter is coming up with the 70 chapter day celebration. There are three events are planned. Our works visit on uh, next Saturday, that is 12th level. And then uh, there is a iron symposium planned on 19th level. <coughs> and 24th, we have celebrations. We have already sent out this uh, pamphlet to all the members. We request you to join in the big numbers. Uh, I hereby request Mr. Uh, Vignesh Ramanan, our uh, IF secretary, Chennai chapter, to give a formal uh, welcome note and then introduce the speaker. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Sindhil. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, it's been immense pleasure in interacting with you all for this uh, technical webinar organized by Chennai chapter. So, uh, to get things started, I'll now introduce the speaker for today. Uh, Mr. Vishwas Kale is the managing director of Vijayesh Instruments Private Limited, manufacturers of process control instrumentation systems with customers in India as well as 14 other countries. He is a recipient of various awards like the Parquet Award for, uh, from Maratha Chamber of Commerce and also annual MCCIA Award for quality of their products from the company. He is also author of two books, Instrumentation and Process Control Techniques in Foundries and Management for Success. Uh, these are two books written by him. He is also a uh, member in uh, ISA, uh, International Society of Automation, and also uh, he's a member of the Industrial Process Measurements and Control Committee of PIS, New Delhi, life member of IAF, and also serves in the National Experts Panel for Instrumentation of its National Center of Technical Service, NCTS. He's also a member of Alucast, ASM India, ASM International. He has presented and public, uh, published technical papers at uh, conferences and uh, journals in India and abroad. Uh, he has a, a passion for uh, music, and he has he has in his collection uh, hundreds of songs from Indian uh, Hindi movies, Mara, Marathi, Bhagavite, and Indian classical. Uh, he is also a trustee of Jagruti Seva Sanstha, a, a registered NGO working in uh, slum areas for uh, women and children in the field of education, vocational training, and healthcare. It is indeed a pleasure to have you with us, sir. The floor is yours. Thank you. I just shared the screen. Okay. Thank you for the kind introduction. I'm going to cover two topics today. One is temperature measurements and another is heat treatment. I'm clubbing both these together because both are related to temperature measurements. So I can overlap some of the topics while speaking on the first or while speaking on the second. Only one slide about my company. We are manufacturers of various items, about 34 products. We have customers in India as well as in about 15 countries abroad. And uh, anything in instrumentation and process control possibly be catered to the needs of the foundrymen. 
coming to temperature, <clears throat> first of all, whatever we manufacture in any foundry is based on the measurements what we do in, the, in a foundry. A foundry in Chennai, a foundry in Coimbatore, a foundry in Bangalore, for example, standardize their process based on their measurements. But the problem is the measurements made by a foundry in, say, Bangalore, for example, and a foundry in Coimbatore, for example, could be different because the measurements are repetitive. The three arrows which are precise because they are very close to each other. But that is not the true reading. The true reading is in the center. That is a precise and accurate. So water process is standardized in a foundry in Coimbatore may not be done correctly in a foundry, say, in another place like Shimoga, for example because the measurements and the repetitiveness will be different. So what we would like to achieve is to measure correctly, that is precisely and accurately as far as possible so that our, all our measurements are correct and we'll be able to measure the, make the measurements uh, correlate to our metallurgy and the process. This slide is very interesting because it shows a typical furnace is a bit exaggerated the actual temperature is 400 degrees centigrade while the measurement is done and sh shown to you as 700. This is, this is a lot of exaggeration, but this is just to drive the point home. The measurement what we do in a furnace or anywhere in the plant is not the necessarily the right measurement of the job. It depends on the location of the thermocouple, calibration and many factors. So as I told you two minutes back, the whatever we measure is standardized on that. If we measure 700 and standardize our process, actually the temperature could be 500. So we would like to measure the temperature as close as possible to the job and make sure that what we are measuring is the correct temperature. So this will be the attempt to help you in doing that. These RTDs are not used much in foundries, but just to, in one or two slides, I want to tell you that if you want to make any very critical measurement in your shop floor or in the lab or in the spectrometer or any lab, any r &D work. This is the sensor which is used because it measures the resistance as the temperature changes. It is very accurate. You can measure even 0 0.01 degree accuracy. This, this is used in some sand plants or r and labs only. But if you're using them, this is very important to know that these are available for very precise measurements. These are connections. I'm not going to that just now. If you have any questions, I will come back to this slide later, how it is connected. And this is how it looks. It is a very small ceramic piece with two wires coming out. And NSA PT100, PT500, PT1000, these are the resistances at zero degrees centigrade and the resistance changes with change of temperature. That is why they are called as PT100, PT500, etc. You can get as small element as possible if you have a typical application. <clears throat> Just to tell you the accuracy you can achieve is 0.1 degree, 0.15 degree. All these accuracies are achievable. Of course, the temperature range is lower, up to 600 degrees centigrade. But if you want to use them in your core plant or sand, uh, sand making plant, these are suggested because you can measure it very correctly. The today everybody is keen on non-contact temperature measurements. The non-contact measure temperature measurement is based on infrared technology. When whenever any hot surface gives any radiation, this is measured by this instrument, and this instrument converts it into temperature. As you can see on the left hand side, it is one two zero eight or one thousand two hundred eight degrees centigrade. There is no human error. You just focus on the hot surface, and you can measure the temperature. There are various models available. During Corona days, you know that your temperature was measured by the small instrument on the right hand side. Your body temperature say 98 or 97 degrees. And there is a one in the middle, which is which has got many facilities like giving an output connected to data logger, etc. which you can mount in the plant and measure the temperature. But if you want to measure the molten metal temperature, then the, then, then the instrument on the left hand side, which is handled is very easy to use and video quick temperature measurement in about two, two to three seconds. 
Of course, there are some considerations which I'll come to. Number one, like in a cinema theater, if you want to watch the movie, the best seats are in the center of the theater because if you sit in the center of the theater, your cone of vision matches with the dimensions of the screen. If you sit at the back of the theater, you cone is bigger than the screen. If you sit in the front rows, the cone is too you too big to be absorbed by your eyes. So here also in the infrared instrument, the cone of vision is very important. So the cone depends on the size of the size of the object, distance from where you want to measure, and all those elements. You can see the diagram here, which can be easily calculated, and you can calculate the focal factor and find out what I can see you are looking for. These are simple tables available, and if you fill up just the data in the table, you can select the instrument which is best for your use. Before you buy this instrument, number one, you must ask the supplier to give a demonstration. And these are the questions he's going to ask you. Number one, what is your temperature range? What is the distance between your object and instrument? Are there any flames, steam, dust, smoke? Then where there are, are there any high temperature sources around any heaters? Or what is a window available or what is a hole available to measure the temperature? What are the ambient temperatures? There are a lot of electrical noises in the foundry. For example, transformers, induction furnaces, compressors. These, these, these also can hamper the temperature measurement. Of course, they can be shielded by the instrument manufacturer. But these are the questions normally he will ask you. The shortest wavelength instrument is ideal because the shortest wavelength instrument will give you the best accuracy because the emissivity change has no, no, no effect or very small effect on the measurement. Emissivity is the quality of a hot surface of radiating energy. So if you have a shortest wavelength instrument, it is very easy. You may feel that this is very complex. It is not so. Just see the graph on the next page. If you just decide from this graph, what is your temperature? Here you can read from say 960 to 1040. And for example, if you want to measure the temperature at 1000 degrees, then the accuracy, if you see on the left-hand top corner, the accuracy can be within 10 degrees. 26 degrees depending on the uh, emissivity factor and the wavelength you choose so you can decide what range you want to use please remember that there are no instruments available which can cover the entire range if you are a foundry which is manufacturing aluminium and if you also have foundry manufacturing say cast iron or steel then two instruments have to be different because no instrument can cover both the ranges the ranges are different aluminium has got different problems because aluminum surface is not exactly suitable for the infrared instrument. But today, th those instruments are available with certain precautions to be taken. But for cast time or any temperature above 1100 degrees, instruments can be used very comfortably. But again, I'm repeating that you must ask the supplier to give a demonstration at your place. Make sure that you are able to get the reading compared with your molten metal temperature measurement by the temperature tips and then by the instrument because the instrument is very expensive it starts from two lakhs three lakhs four lakhs so before invest, investing in that the better you check that now let us come to the thermocouple which is very interesting factor thermocouple is nothing but a device which has got uh, two wires which are two dissimilar metals they can be copper cross tantan iron cross tantan nickel chrome platinum rhodium any two dissimilar metals when they join together they make a thermocouple and when the junction is heated, you get a electromotive force generated at the other end. So this electromotive force is proportional to the temperature the junction is generating. So it is a very simple device, gives very good output, and it is used very widely in the foundries. I'll be talking a lot about this and the application in the next couple of minutes. Look at this picture. This is more interesting. <coughs> If you see the thermocouple on the left hand side, A and B, that is the thermocouple, and the instrument is on the right hand side, and it is connected by a cable. The, the thermocouple and the instrument are going to have some distance between them, so it is to be connected by a cable. This is called a compensating cable. Why this is used? It is interesting. The electromotive force which is generated by the thermocouple at the junction Ti is the measurement which we want to do but 
the temperature at hot junction where you are going to measure temperature let us say it is 1000 degrees and the other end of the thermocouple let us say outside the furnace let us say 30 degrees then the temperature difference will be measured as 970 that is 1000 minus 30 degrees so actually what you are getting is 970 degrees temperature electromotive force or millivolts which will be going to the instrument but we want to have the instrument which will show you 1000 degrees which is a true temperature so this compensating cable compensates for that error compensates for those 30 degrees if you see the junction ti which is at 30 degrees centigrade it is compensated by this compensating cable that is why this cable is very important and this cable has got polarity positive and negative so it must be connected with the correct polarity if you connect with the incorrect polarity you will get an error Secondly, this cable has some different color codes. You can see the chart below. And depending on that color code, you can connect the cable very easily. Red is positive and the other color is always negative. Just remember red is positive. There are different thermocouples and different compressive cables. In your plant, whenever you feel that the temperature is incorrect, the first culprit could be the thermocouple. Second will be the compressing cable. And most probably the compensatory cable will be the more problematic because if the cable is damaged, the shielding is gone or it is shorted, you will get an error. And secondly, when you replace the compensatory cable in your plant, your maintenance engineer will connect the cable. But if it does not connect with the positive and negative ends correctly, then still the electrical circuit will be complete. But because the polarities are reversed, the error will be more. So please ensure that it is connected correctly and you get the correct temperature. That is why these compensating cables are very important. And try to use metal shielded cables so that they are protected from the signal from electrical noise. Especially if you are taking temperature on the shop floor with the molten bath, it is better you have a metal shielded, shielded cable because you are very near to the induction furnace or electric car furnace. And those signals should not be picked up by this uh, thermocouple small voltage the voltage is very small of the order of some millivolts what are the thermocouples what we use in the foundries there are j a e t some i am giving so these are temperature ranges you can choose the thermocouple for that range and i always recommend that you use the thermocouple of the higher range to measure the low range so you get better accuracy suppose you want to measure 750 degrees centigrade and then I will suggest you go to K and not Z. If you see the Z thermocouple, it can measure 750 degrees centigrade. K also can measure that. But if you go to K, that is better than the Z. So always go to the higher thermocouple, higher grade, some higher range thermocouple for giving you better accuracy. These are normal accuracies mentioned by the manufacturer. But if you insist, some better accuracy thermocouples are possible say it is 2.2 which is normal but if you want you can get for 1.1 degree also i can see thermocouples if you pay a little more to the supplier now how to choose the thermocouples i told you select the high range if possible for long usage so there is cost saving the conductor size should be bigger the bigger the conductor size the life is better in the thermocouple and for accuracy Thinner wires will give fast response, but the life is less. So you have to get an optimized solution for the wires diameter. There is a standard table available by which you can choose the wire diameters. There is a selection table available, which is a standard table and by which you can measure this. And how much you should insert the thermocouple in the furnace, heat treatment furnace I'm talking or any furnace. The standard thumb rule is, is about six to eight mm diameter into the diameter of the thermocouple that is if the thermocouple diameter is say 12 mm it should be about 12 into 8 that is about 100 mm inside the furnace then if you follow that thumb rule then the sensor measures the temperature correctly the tip of the thermocouple is going to measure the temperature the tip does not get affected by the reflections from the wall and you always get a right temperature so another interesting aspect there are insulators in the thermocouple these are not porcelain insulators these are insulators which will protect the thermocouple wires even at a high temperature these are recrystallized alumina or alumina insulators 
they have a property that the electrically they are insulated even at high temperatures are up to 1600 degrees centigrade if you use porcelain insulators they become short electrically at high temperatures and if they become short or start conducting then the millivolts generated by the thermocouple will be wrong so ensure that the insulators are always of that quality very crystallized alumina or alumina this is a big choice of sheets i can name about 150 just to get an idea depending on your temperature application atmosphere in the furnaces this is not applicable to molten metal i'm talking about other furnaces you can choose a sheet ss316 304 310 446 etc generally we recommend to use for equipment 600 when you are in a doubt the price is more but it, but it meets all the requirements gives a long life and is less prone to corrosion and stainless steels if you want to use then you have to use the proper 304 316 or 31 depending on the treatment job whether it is a salt bath or atmosphere all those tables and details available depending on that you should use it again i'll repeat whatever sheet you want to use use always a sheet of the higher range so that the sheet gives a longer life so in 600 is better than say ss310 or ss304 it will last for a longer time this is the typical thermocouple there is a thermocouple head on the right hand side and there is a tube on the left hand side interestingly there is a threading in between which is a i can call as a flange or a support tube which is put in the furnace so that the thermocouple is always put correctly inside the furnace the length of immersion remains the same even if you replace the thermocouple length of immersion should not change if the length of immersion changes then the temperature will be wrong so that is why this fixed nut or some flange is used so that you can always put the thermocouple to a particular range so this is very important because generally people just replace the thermocouple but they get a wrong temperature they do not know what is happening thermocouple may be good but the length of insertion may be wrong the thermocouple head has to be outside the furnace and should be as away as possible from the shell of the heat treatment furnace or any furnace because if the head gets too hot then you may get an error but generally the head is designed in such a way that it does not it is quite far from the thermocouple length and this problem should not arise but just ensure in case your head is very close to the furnace try to increase the length of the thermocouple and bring it little away from the shell if you are using ceramic thermocouples for higher temperatures say 1400 1500 1300 in the rolling mills or such applications or forging then these ceramic tube sheets are used or even this thermocouple is used in your chemical laboratory for strolling apparatus where the temperature is measured strolling apparatus has got a platinum thermocouple we use the ceramic tube there are different kinds of ceramic tubes one is metal ceramic silicon carbide porcelain recrystallized alumina i'll always suggest to go in for recrystallized alumina because it lasts up to 1700 degrees centigrade and uh, metal ceramic or silicon carbide they are prone to damage quickly but recrystallized alumina or silimanite are sheets which will give a longer life the sheets also have a life so when the sheath gets damaged or gets broken you have to change the thermocouple so just have a visual inspection once in a while when possible and you can change the thermocouple because the thermocouples used with these applications are generally platinum rhodium which are very expensive platinum thermocouple will cost maybe from 10,000 50,000 onwards it is better to take care of the thermocouple than breaking it in some processes you use an l-shaped thermocouple your interesting point is the, the knee the bend the bend is a very weak point in the thermocouple why weak because it gets hot continuously as long as along with the tip and if the knee is not properly protected or properly made by the supplier the knee will open the thermocouple or short the thermocouple and give you a wrong temperature so may ensure that the knee is properly made by the supplier and does not give a problem so knee is very critical this is another thermocouple it is used in the temperature mapping basically or any other application where you want to use 
thermocouples near hot areas. The construction is very interesting. We took two wires put in a tube, metal tube like SS3043163 or in Conel. We fill up magnesium oxide powder inside and pack it. So it becomes a insulated thermocouple. That is why we call it mineral insulated thermocouple. You can see three types here. One is exposed, one is grounded, one is insulated. When I say grounded, the thermocouple tip is connect is touching the pipe. And when I say insulated, it is not touching the pipe. In a grounded thermocouple, the sensing is very fast because the pipe or the sheath, metal sheath gets hot quickly and that heat is transmitted to the junction quickly and you get a quick temperature measurement. But sometimes this is not recommended because there are electrical noises and other aspects in the foundry. So sometimes it, mostly it is better to use an insulated thermocouple so that the junction is little away from the metal sheath. So still you get a good response. And if you see on the left hand side, it is a very flexible thermocouple. You can mold it, shape it the way you want, and you can put it inside the furnace. These are not made in India, these are basically imported and cut to length and supplied to the user. If you are using a duplex thermocouple, there are some other problems. For any thermocouple, duplex thermocouple, there are two junctions inside. If they are not constructed properly, what happens is at high temperatures, they start getting problem. At lower temperatures, they work fine. But the temperature rises, sometimes the wires get bent and they touch each other inside the pipe. When they touch each other inside, then the thermocouple starts giving erratic reading. And when you take it out, naturally the thermocouple is cold. So even if you open, you will find that it is, looks fine. But the problem is generally if the two elements are not constructed properly, they will touch each other and give erratic reading. So ensure that the construction is done correctly by the manufacturer. Of course, a good manufacturer will ensure that this will not happen. But if you are any facing any problem with duplex thermocouple erratic reading between the two, then this could be one of the reasons. If you have to measure any surface temperature of any sand, mold, hot surface, hot plate, anything, is a very handy instrument which has got a handle and a thermocouple, very flat thermocouple at the front end. You can touch it to the hot surface and measure the temperature is a better operated instrument. We can measure up to 1280 degrees centigrade in a, in a couple of seconds. And you can carry it in the shop floor, put it in the pocket and go anywhere and check the temperature. If you've got a doubt. Let us come to molten metals. When I say molten metals, I am referring to iron cast iron or any iron and aluminum. We, I'll talk about both. This is a temperature measurement typically done in a foundry where you dip the tip in the molten metal by taking the slag away and measuring the temperature. Most of you are aware of how to do it. There are different thermocouples available. I'll tell you the limitations and advantages. The thermocouple in the middle is a multi-dip thermocouple with a ceramic tube and with a long tube which has come out about 80 mm long. It contains platinum rubin wire and there is a connector there. This multi-dip can be used at least five to seven times in a molten bath. But you have to dip only the quartz tube end in the molten metal that if you take that care and when you take the multi-dip out of the molten bath, you just have to uh, make sure that the metal does not stick to the quartz tube then you can use it again and again. That is why we call it as a multi-dip. The tip on the right hand side bottom is a carbon tube tip which you can dip it in the molten metal and different lengths are available 300, 400, 600 carbon tubes and the measurement is done in about uh, 3 seconds, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds quickly and the on the left hand side top is another thermocouple which is fitted in a cargo tube just like multi-dip but it comes with a cargo tube that is also very popular for smaller induction furnaces you can use the multi-dip which is in the middle in the mid shown in the middle but for larger induction furnaces of say 250 kg or 500 kg up i suggest that you use a cargo tube like tip which because you can dip it comfortably and you need not go very near to the furnace but choice is yours and depending on the cost you are talking, let us talk about the cost. The typical multi-dip may cost 60, 70 rupees. 
but the tip which which you can use only once may cost about 16 70 rupees by today costing 70 rupees can give you four five readings a tip can give you only one reading so you have to decide the best choice for your application what is the instrument <clears throat> when you when you dip in molten metal there is a slack so when you want to take the measurement and take a tip out what happens if the slag is hotter then the slag is hotter than the molten metal and you may get a very incorrect temperature am i audible sir sir you are audible audible okay, okay. Yeah, yes sir you are audible yes. sir audible sir okay so you have to use a instrument which will not detect the peak temperature peak temperature is an incorrect aspect Peak temperature is a temperature which the tip is going to measure because that is going to the peak temperature. We have to measure the temperature below the slag. So generally we move the slag away and dip the tip and take it out. But if the tip is coming out of slag by some error or by some mistake, the tip will measure the slag temperature and not the tip temperature. So that is why we use an instrument called plateau detection technique. What is plateau detection? Plateau detection is nothing but in technique where the temperature is monitored every microsecond while it is being taken and whenever there is a steady temperature only that is recorded or that is locked so that is why we call it a plateau detection technique most of the instruments which you use today are plateau detection techniques so you need not worry about it but if, if you buy any cheaper instrument of 2000 3000 5000 rupees i assure you that it will not be it will not be plateau detection it will be detection instrument, which will still be an error of maybe around 10 degrees. There are different types available RSP. I will strongly recommend to use R type, which is 13% than S type, because R type gives you more resolution, more output from the thermocouple than the S type. And if you are measuring temperature above 1600 degrees centigrade, then only you have to go for B type which is generally recommended for 1600 to 1850 or so. Otherwise, R type is most suitable for most of the foundries. You can get, you can have an instrument as, as I shown on the left hand side, and you can also have a display which you can connect to the instrument in the plant at a long place. So you can measure, you can see the temperature on the instrument or even in, at the shop floor. You can have your choice of a wired instrument or your choice of even wireless instrument. The wireless instrument does not need any wires. You can directly, uh, it can directly display on the instrument and the display. There is no wires, no burning of wires and nothing. And these days, the wireless instruments take care of the electrical noise in the furnace. So there is no problem of using this wireless instrument. They're a little bit expensive, but you have to decide the cost benefit because sometimes you would like to have the instrument in a control room and the display on the shop floor. So perhaps this may be recommended just like your spectrometer analysis you display on the shop floor from sector to room this is also possible for aluminum temperatures if you want to measure the temperature once in a while non-continuous this is a thermocouple used which is a bare thermocouple it is about 120 millimeter long you just stick in the molten aluminum and the molten aluminum quickly determines the temperature uh, and passes on to the instrument which i have shown you earlier the range will be different the aluminum temperature range is lower but you can measure temperature using this technique it is very economic and just like multi-dip this can be used again and again this thermocouple only you have to remove the thermocouple from the front side replace it about 25 times you can use it in your plant so in any induction furnace where you are melting aluminum you can measure this quickly that is why it is very popular for quick measurements. But if you have a melting furnace as well as a holding furnace, then in the holding furnace, you have to use a continuous type measurement. Earlier, silicon carbide was used, but it was prone to breakage and very expensive. Some people still use cast iron, but cast iron is not recommended because cast iron has got iron, and which is not a friendly metal for aluminum, as you know. So most popular is this clay graphite sheet. It can be used very heavily. And I show you all the advantages here. It has a very good response. It does not wait with the aluminum. Only precaution what you have to take is take the 
thermocouple out of the molten bath before the furnace is put off. You should not leave the thermocouple in a bath when it is getting cooled down, otherwise this will break. This is a very economic, 5,000 rupees up or something like that. And these are used with proper precaution. You can use, use for about uh, 50 to 100 cycles. And you can just replace the sheath again and start using it again. This is very popular in most of the aluminum foundries today. Calibration is another issue. Anything which has to be used has to be checked for calibration. As you all know, I'll spend uh, two, three minutes on this. So calibration of right from vernier caliper to micrometer to anything has to be calibrated in a foundry. Uh, what is this calibration? I'll talk about the thermocouple, which we are talking about all the time. So what we do, we put the thermocouple in the furnace on the left hand side. And there is a master thermocouple which is also put there. There is a small instrument. We set the temperature at which water temperature we want to test it. Let us say we want to test it at 200, 300, 400, 500. So we set it there. Then the furnace automatically goes to that temperature and stabilizes. You can see on the right hand side there is a calibrator. So we measure the temperature on the calibrator along with the master and compare them and find out whether there is any variation, whether it is within the tolerance and all that. So all this is what we call as a basic calibration of any thermocouple. Please remember that thermocouple has to be taken out of the furnace for calibration. You cannot calibrate any uh, thermocouple while inside the furnace. You have to take it out and calibrate in a furnace because if you want to calibrate inside the furnace, the furnace temperature, we don't know and if you really want to calibrate inside the furnace only, then what you do is insert another thermocouple inside the furnace at the same location, master thermocouple as you call it, compare the output and then decide whether both are showing the same temperature or whatever is the variation. Secondly, <clears throat> most of us foundrymen call somebody for calibration, nobody attends to them and nobody knows what exactly they are doing. So please make sure that your service engineer stands next to him and finds what exactly he's doing and also go through the certificate carefully and understand the tolerances and traceability whether they are really done correctly because the certificates can be generated very easily i'm not talking about everybody but there are some agencies which can fool you very easily it is better you put your engineer on the job and make sure that a collection is carried out exactly as the as per the procedure specified by the manufacturer, which is very important. What is traceability? <clears throat> like uh, Greenwich Mean Time, which is uh, zero in uh, Greenwich, and accordingly we count one, two, three, four to 24 hours all over the world. Similarly, traceability has to be established all over the world. So all countries' main laboratories, in India it is National Physical Laboratory, so this laboratory controls all standards in India. So likewise, laboratories in say Japan, UK, USA, France, all laboratories are connected to each other and they maintain their standards at par or at the same level all over the world. So whatever is, uh, for example, whatever is one meter in India has to be one meter in USA. So the measurement or the masters are checked, calibrated and maintained all over the world. So this is what we call it as an international standard, which came at the time when ISO came into picture in 1991. So everybody was going after ISO standardization. Then people remember that there is something like traceability. Now this traceability is the thing of like our family tree. Like our family tree, we have got a grandfather, great grandfather, grandfather, father, son, etc etc similar traceability is starts from npl national physical laboratory in new delhi then goes to some main accredited laboratories in say cities like mumbai pune chennai etc then there are some accredited laboratories who are get accreditation from nabl that is national uh, accreditation board new delhi so there could be some in chennai for example in going to bangalore etc Be some people who are doing calibrations 
but they could be limited only to say temperature only pressures or only mechanical measurements so these are these we call as calibration centers now all these have to maintain the traceability by the certification the thumb rule is <clears throat> what are the calibration centers have got in their hand as an instrument for measurement when their caliper or calibrator or voltmeter ammeter whatever it must be checked with accredited laboratories accredited laboratories must get checked with main laboratories and they must get checked with npl of course calibration center can directly get it calibrated with npl also but the thumb rule is there has to be 10 percent better accuracy at each stage for example i measure one millimeter at calibration center the accredited laboratory must have capability of measuring 0.1 millimeter the main laboratory must have facility to ma measure 0 0.01 millimeter and the NPL must have 0 0.001 then we call it a traceability this is a different subject but if you want to set up a laboratory in your plant then all this has to be understood and even if you don't want to go into this at least make sure that the traceability is maintained with NABL or similar laboratory when you get a certificate I'm showing you a small person at the bottom this person is important to you who is speaking to you because there is a Bureau of Indian Standards in New Delhi which is maintaining all standards for industrial process control measurement and control all standards are maintained by them related to measurement and control I'm not talking about other standards in my area measurement and control so I'm a member of that committee so if you have anything needed as far as standards are concerned or any information or any problems or any some accessories giving you a problem all these answers will be possible because that data is available with bureau of indian standards and i being a member i have access to that data that is why only i'm sharing that information feel free to contact anytime this is a calibration system again i'm showing you from a close angle you can see the thermocouple you can see the instrument on the control panel and the calibrator on the right hand side when this is done you can calibrate any sense temperature sensor or any sense sensor which depends on temperature very happily <clears throat> now i'll go to heat treatment furnaces you want to any, ask any questions now or shall i proceed further so can i have an end out session hello, sir? hello. 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 We can Hello. take it to the end. Uh, Alex. Okay, okay. No we can take it. Okay. Now I talk about heat treatment furnaces. <clears throat> I'll show you the only one instrument for heat treatment furnace. You are most of you are aware of it. There are many instruments like temperature indicator, controller, data loggers, etc. This is one instrument which is called PLC, programmable logic controllers, which controls the furnace automatically and it has got a lot of applications. It has got, it can take a lot of inputs, it can a lot of outputs, it can log the data and even, even you can automate your, automate your heat uh, treatment process. That is why I am showing you. This is a very small instrument and if you do this then the operator just have to give an input or some password of the job which is handling or whatever specific cycle he wants to run. When that data is given, then this instrument takes care of handling your on off control, PID control, gas burners, then atmosphere control, combustion control, or whatever controls you want to do. So, this is possible today for all users of heat treatment furnaces. This is applicable even to forging furnaces, reheating furnaces, or whatever furnaces you are in mind. The furnace control <clears throat> earlier we were using on off controls. And now uh, on-off control used to give an error. Suppose you set the instrument at say, 1000 degrees centigrade. Then 1000 degree, if you set, then temperature can go up and down by 10 degrees. So you see actual temperature inside the furnace will shift from 990 to 1010, which is not actually what we want. So we want to control at 1000 degrees. So there are some development in instruments. I'll not go into the complexity. Then we had proportional control, proportional indicating control, and finally PID control. I'll give a simple example. Suppose you have a bucket of water, 
which is to build up a uh, sorry you have a uh, bucket which is empty was filling up with water when the water is full you put the tap off but this is called on off control but if you use this is sometimes what happens either the water will spill over or the bucket may have less water because you may stop the water little earlier so this will always give little error here and there in filling up the bucket similarly in furnace this problem will occur so what we do we use the pid control which is on the top right hand side it it measures the deviation from the set point like in a bucket the level is the top of the bucket so whatever is the level from the top it will go on monitoring and as accordingly the tap will go on reducing its opening slowly and slowly and finally the water will stop this is called pid control in simple language so this is this must be used for your heat treatment furnace or wherever you want a very tight control that is why i am explaining this pid control instrument so i we talked about thermocouples some time back but thermocouples are so the devices which will measure the temperature at the tip of the thermocouple so first is you have to check the calibration and the operating life of the thermocouple depends on many factors we have to remember that just like we age a human being ages becomes old so really thermocouples life depends on the operating temperature what is the time spent at operating temperature ambient temperatures cyclic rate that is thermal shocks i can say up and down breakage and damages because of protective tubes in what if there are any contaminants oil dirt etc which are on the thermocouple that can give error so all these have to be thought of when you are thinking of life of a thermocouple now if you want to introduce the thermocouples in the furnace then these have to be put at the proper place because we want to measure actually the furnace atmosphere temperature and also as close as to the job so there are different uh, heat flows inside the furnace there could be uneven heating they may not be circulating fan uneven distribution of the workflow because if you are putting say castings inside the hot heat treatment furnace the casting dimensions are not same so maybe hollow so may have holes so may have openings so heat may not be reaching everywhere and heat capacity of the furnace has to be used fully so if you pack the furnace properly then possibly the heat transfer will be better so thermocouples must be put in such a way that they are parallel to the isotherms isotherms are the levels of the temperature which are uniform and insertion length as i told you should be at least 20 times the diameter of the thermocouple then you can measure the job temperature please remember we never measure the job temperature in a furnace we measure the atmosphere temperature but as close as possible to the job and that is why we say the job temperature is so much so uh, so try to reach the job as close as possible and also have a separating fan or such some arrangement so that the atmosphere inside is separated and uniformity of temperature inside is maintained for that uniformity i want to spend some time the continuous quality sequa 9 version 4 is a standard and which has to be followed by all heat treatment people to if they want to supply multinational or quality conscious people this is a process cqi and this has come very recently all over the world and this involves everybody in the shop floor so this is a group in usa automotive industry action group aaig and all these automobile manufacturers have come together and they have formed this group and they have laid out some standards how a heat treatment furnace should be run or how its performance should be checked and there are members and now in india also like toyota honda nissan they are in india very near to your chennai coimbatore bangalore also if anyone is is here from india you are some at all my actually we near to you also and they have their own ways of checking your process so they have set up some standards cqa 9 cqa 14 cqa 27 etc we'll restrict to cqa 9 about heat treatment in our presentation today so how do we do it so we have to answer these questions first as a as a as a uh, professional do we actually know the job temperature 
I will answer no. I don't know. I know the temperature inside the furnace, but not the job temperature. This is my answer. You can think yourself. Do do I have uniform way of temperature? Unless I check, I do not know. Fully loaded to use full heat capacity of the job. Please, I will please check whether it is you are really loading the furnace fully because heat capacity has to be used fully. Like refrigerator at home, the maximum load you keep in the refrigerator it will work better. Are you getting base temperature and atmospheric control? That also you have to check. Are you using petty controllers? Everybody uses them today. Are you ready to show customer the true data of each cycle? Possibly answer maybe no in some cases because you are not confident. And are you consuming the lowest energy? That we'll have to check. So for enough getting uniformity, simple rules are utilize full heat capacity of load, use of circulating fan, correct placement of thermocouples, correct calibration of everything, and do furnace mapping. So let us talk about furnace mapping. There are two versions today, API 6A and CQ9 version 4, which includes now AMS 2750F, which has come very recently. I generally recommend uh, foundry men to go in for API 6A first, because if you are not done mapping at all till today, it is better to spend less money get some idea of the furnace behavior by using APS 6A. If then make some corrections in the furnace necessary, and then check as per CPI 9. Yeah, right? I... So if you use CPI 9, then uh, what happens is uh, you spend more money and the results will be very funny and you'll be uncomfortable. So it is better to ensure first, like a surgery, cataract surgery, for example, doctor tells you get your uh, blood pressure and uh, uh, diabetes checked. So similarly, APS6A, you get it checked first and do, could then go for mapping. <coughs> what is APS6? We just put bare thermocouples inside the furnace near the job. We measure the temperatures, follow the procedures, and uh, we use the thermocouples only after confirming their calibration. So these are the thermocouples I talked about some time back. Very flexible thermocouples we put inside the furnace. Thank you. We use the proper thermocouple depending on our range. And this is the standard. So this is my furnace. So I put nine thermocouples at nine locations. Then I'm I am taking a typical example. The standard set by API 6A is it says that a variation allowed is not more than 13 degrees, etc. So follow that standard. Then maintain the records and uh, as per records, there are different thermocouples, number of thermocouples, all the procedure is given there. Follow that procedure, <coughs> how much thermocouples, how many thermocouples should be put, etc. <coughs> how to take the readings every two minutes, then take the reading after the furnace stabilizes, all this is mentioned in the standard. So follow that and then for convenience furnace, there are different standards. Follow those standards. And then after standards are reached, done for half an hour, record the data after the, after the temperature stabilizes. In this case, when the temperature stabilizes at set point, we wait for half an hour and take the temperatures and, and generate a certificate like this. Men, men, mention all the data of the furnace, what are the thermocouples used, what is the data logger used. These, these are my readings for time wise. And this is the graph which I get from starting to beginning. If you see on the right hand side, the temperature has stabilized around 850 degrees. That data I am taking and that variation I want to calculate. If the variation is more than plus minus 13, then there is something wrong in the furnace. The heaters may be incorrect, local location may be incorrect, etc., which are which I will have to correct. And when you go to CQA 9, this is a more comprehensive standard. Here the procedure is the same, but the accuracies are stringent. The instrumentation, instrument calibration, the certification, the result of calibration, all have to be mentioned correctly. 
there are two tests one is system accuracy test and temperature uniformity survey system accuracy test means we check whether your system is correct that is your temperature controller compensating cable and thermocouple whether they are working correctly this is set test after that test we find the uniformity of the furnace see you can see here there is a test instrument which is independent of the furnace there is a test sensor which is independent of the furnace and we measure the temperature on the test instrument along with your instrument on the furnace so we don't disturb your process we measure it independently and just ensure that the test instrument where i measure and the test instrument which you have whether they are batching or whether there is any variation this is called set test this is a thermocouple what we use a thermocouple what you use and what we put inside is a set thermocouple either we use this arrangement or we insert a another thermocouple inside the furnace very near to your thermocouple within 50 mm distance between the two tips and compare the results this is called set test when you do set test you can see the reading here uh, your instrument shows 871 mine shows 875 like that so there is a variation between yours and mine i do some calculations as per the uh, procedure i go to the next page and finally i come to the calculation that the difference between the two is minus two degree centigrade allowable difference is plus minus five degrees so i say yes everything is correct i will not go into details but i also make corrections for the calibration certificates for example a thermocouple when it is calibrated outside shows that there is a deviation minus two degrees that means my true temperature for my true temperature i must add two degrees centigrade to the thermocouple reading i do that similarly my instrument has, has got a deviation let us say minus three degrees then i must add three degrees so i get a true temperature so i do the, all these corrections and get the final reading right in the beginning i told you we want to measure the accurate and precise temperature so by this way we try to get accurate temperature as possible of the thermocouple and the instrument by making use of the certificates for <coughs> temperature uniformity what we do we put the thermocouples as i showed you a little earlier and we put a lot of thermocouples depending on the size of the furnace measure the data every two minutes and wait for the temperature to stabilize when it stabilizes then we take 15 sets for the evaluation make corrections as per the elevation test certificates that means i get the true readings of the thermocouple and the instrument you'll see a big table here just see the top line the time is 11 uh, so time is 21 99 that is the time <coughs> You see a lot of thermocouples 1 to 15. I put 15 thermocouples and the control instrument reading on the extreme right hand side is 351. So at 351, my thermocouples are showing readings from 353. If you read the top top right hand top uh, horizontal line, it is 353 to 346. There is a variation from thermocouple to thermocouple. There is bound to be some variation, but I just want to record the variation at 350 degrees centigrade so i have taken 15 thermocouples and taken taken 50 sets like this so this is my table ready for calculation i hope i am clear in this so what i do for each channel i find the maximum temperature and minimum temperature each channel first channel maximum is 353 minimum is 346 second channel maximum is 354 minus 346 these are the temperatures at 350 degrees so at 350 degrees i'm getting a variation of maximum and low as shown by this table 353 346 354 346 etc <coughs> so from this data i find the maximum temperature of all these 15. it comes to 354 maximum is 354 and minimum of all these is 345 or find the variation between the two the variation between the two algebraic variation is minus uh, plus 4.7 to minus 4.8 <clears throat> my furnace class 
as per the standard says plus minus 11 degrees is allowed furnace class depends on the temperature range volume of the furnace and other things i'll call i'll not go into details just now but these data these species are mentioned in the standard the standard says your particular furnace is class 3 and plus minus 11 degree tolerance is allowed for the uniformity and actually you are getting tolerance as plus 4.7 and minus 4.8 degree centigrade so the furnace has passed the examination so you are getting a certificate yes you are meeting the requirements of cqi 920 cqi 9 version 4 so this is the exactly what you do i show you only few pages but this is about 12 15 pages certificate with a lot of data but this is how you come to the conclusion of the furnace behavior i just showed two three things the thermocouple accuracy has to be 1.1 degrees centigrade as i told you you must buy thermocouples with this accuracy if you want to do this you also mentions the sensors and the sensor calibration what are the specifications but some tables i'm showing you these are tables available in the standard it also mentions the what instruments you should use what should be the calibration then these are the classes of the furnace then number of thermocouples used for each volume this is the class and what is the range required everything is there so you have to find where you fit in this picture and do the, the calibration how many times you can use sensors you have to put the data so you cannot go on using sensor one after another many years that it has got some life as i told you and these are the basic problems in the sensor which you can check which i told you a little earlier sheath junction error compensating cable error age etc all things you have to take care when you have to follow the standard my company is doing this for last couple of years and uh, we, are, <coughs> we, are, uh, we are generated at least or signed at least 10,000 certificates all over india so <coughs> i'm not talking from commercial point of view but technically if you want any assistance in your process or something you're not able to get or your consultants or assessors are not able to are not getting convinced or you would like to convince them you can contact me i'll be happy to help you technically there is no commercial angle please forget that technically i'll be happy to help you this is my passion and all things can be answered if there is a conveyor furnace you can just tie the thermocouple to the job it will travel with the job and as it travels with the job it will monitor the temperature continuously even a sensor of 100 meter long is available like a furnace in Bharat Forge or such large installations this is already being done and they travel with the job and come out from the other side and you can monitor the temperature of the job as it is travels it is easily possible you can see some picture here while the job is being loaded you can see the two sensors put on the job they will travel with the job these are the preliminary arrangement you can see the job being loaded and a lot of sensors are put if you want to do measurement while the basket is dipped into a oil quenching or water quenching that also is possible there's a data log on the left hand side that also can be put near the furnace but today tra tracking data loggers are also available which you can put inside the furnace they will travel with the furnace they measure the temperature log the data record to record the data inside the data logger and later on you can retrieve the data take out the data on your pc and measure it so calibrations uh, finally anything that affects the process must be checked for calibration as i told you everything must be checked the tolerances are to be decided by on the basis of the process and not by the standard alone the standard is okay but your process can have a loose tolerance please I will lose tolerance. So you need not go for the standard. If the customer insists, yes, or you do not generate your own tolerances unnecessarily too tight, there will be problematic view. And finally, the calibration report is nothing but a fact finding data which will help you to make your process better or improve your quality. So always get things calibrated from a proper laboratory so that, so that you know exactly where to stand. This is my last slide. Like your schoolmates or college friends, they do not change. They do not worry about your status. They do not worry about your economic background, financial background, social status. They remain faithful to you. I show you some dogs here or some animals. 
so like that our instruments or sensors are your professional friends please treat them like that they will always be true to you and they will always give true results to you thank you and open for any questions if you have thank you sir for the yeah. fantastic uh, presentation it was very much uh, understandable and very uh, uh, very well uh, made sir thank you very much for uh, any questions uh, our speaker can uh, take it up please uh, sir we have a question from uh, one question from our side yes uh, so we just wanted to know uh, you please uh, first tell your name and uh, the company name please uh, my name is uh, deepak kurche from shakuntala steel kolapur yes uh, we just wanted to know what is the good frequency to change the thermocouples in heat treatment furnaces only one question no yeah yes ah uh, the frequency will depend on the use usage generally if you are using that heat treatment furnace continuously it is the means about 300 days in a year or so yeah then every 2 years the thermocouples have to be replaced because they get aged and they will start showing you less readings yes, yes. they will they will still work but they will give you less reading if my furnace is working uh, 24 hours yes then what should be the uh, good frequency they yeah, you Change. get they was calibrated every 6 month that is what we normally recommend people do okay. not listen to us they get change uh, they come to us only when there is a problem but i suggest you get the calibration check every 6 months or at least one every year okay so okay. <laughs> from an appropriate laboratory yes yeah thank you sir uh sir there is a question from mr uh, ravi shankar yes if we use multiple tip to measure uh, temperature range is yes. between 1250 to 1450 degree yes what is the time interval if we multiply multiple tipping is there any reading error when you is a good question when you use the multi tip you take the tip out and the holder is hot so you have to wait till the holder gets a little cold because the holder has got a receptacle inside or a connector inside the connector must come back to room temperature before you take the next tip and secondly the quartz tube any if there any but but let's stuck to that you must you must remove that then you can do it actually you can use it every 3 minutes 4 minutes there is no problem just to take it out but don't put water or don't pull it by water or moist cloth just let it be uh, get cold by the air or at first air are you satisfied yeah he has said okay sir okay so any further questions gentlemen you can either put it in the <coughs> chat box or uh, you can ask your, you can unmute yourself and ask the questions if there are uh, no further questions we would like to go ahead with the vote of thanks i'll i'll only say one sentence sir yes sir yes sir if you still have any questions you can send an email to us we'll answer it Yeah, yeah, that can also be done. <clears throat> All right, so gentlemen, if we have any further questions, you can just drop a mail to Mr. Vishwas Kale. He'll be answering the same. So uh, it is now time for the vote of thanks. So we, uh, gentlemen, we have today had a very interesting webinar on the topic temperature measurements and heat treatment. We are sure the contents of the presentation had a lot of takeaway for our audience. we would like to thank mr viswas kale managing director vijayesh instruments private limited for taking time off his busy schedule and making us rich with knowledge thank you very much sir further we would like to thank all the members who joined us for today's talk uh, we are sure uh, you are uh, you had a wonderful learning experience thank you very much for joining us on time uh, we from the chennai chapter we'll be conducting many such interesting programs and we will be sharing the information on the same to you soon looking forward to seeing you all in all our upcoming programs thank you very much gentlemen thank you sir thank you for the presentation thank you